Hey hi welcome back to the lecture so in this lecture i am going to give you a brief introduction to this entire hardware that we are going to design in this course okay so uh, i will walk you through all the sections which are present on this pcb and uh, i will give you the brief introduction to all those sections okay so this hardware is actually basically divided in three different sections the first one is a uh, power supply section then the second one is a microcontroller section and then the third one is 4G LTE modem section okay so i will walk you through all these sections step by step and i will give you the brief overview or a brief introduction to that particular section okay so first of all i am going to start with the power supply section um power supply section of this hardware is actually uh, divided in three different subsections the first one is uh, smps section then the second one is lithium ion battery charger section and then the third one is ldo section okay so on this pcb basically the lithium ion battery charger section is not present uh, we are going to design a separate pcb for lithium ion battery charger section uh, battery charger and uh, we are going to use that pcb to power this entire system okay so this block that you see this block this entire block is basically the smps section of this hardware okay and uh, this entire system actually it will be powered by an external 12 volt adapter okay so here we are going to plug that external 12 volt adapter and uh, at this point at this point uh, we are going to get the output voltage okay so this section is basically a smps section and the purpose of this section is to step down the 12 volt input uh, which is actually dc so it's going to step down this 12 volt input to 5 volt and at this point we are going to get that 5 volt okay and this is basically the main ic uh, main smps ic which is responsible for stepping down this 12 volt dc to 5 volt uh, dc output okay and uh, these are the different components which are connected around this uh, smps ic uh, in this section uh, we are going to discuss every single thing about the smps okay like component selection then uh, theoretical analysis of all the components so everything we are going to discuss in detail okay so we will discuss the significance of each and every component connected in this smps section okay so that was all about the smps block of this hardware after that these two resistors that you see r26 and r31 uh, these two resistors are basically responsible for connecting this smps block with the entire circuitry okay so if i remove these two resistor then this power supply section will be completely isolated from the rest of the circuitry so uh, i told you that we can power this entire system with the help of uh, smps section and uh, battery charger section so when we remove these two resistors then this uh, smps section will be completely isolated and the output of lithium ion battery charger uh, circuitry we will connect it uh, at these two points okay and then this is how we are going to power this entire circuitry with the help of uh, lithium ion battery charger uh, circuitry okay so the purpose of these two resistors uh, this is basically at this point 5 volt is there and this is basically the ground so so this resistor and this resistor basically connects this smps section with the rest of the circuitry okay so that's all about the uh, smps section now this entire block that you see this entire block is basically the microcontroller section okay and this is the ldo of microcontroller section uh, uh, to the input of this ldo 5 volt is provided and the output of this ldo is basically a 3.3 volt because this entire microcontroller section works on 3.3 volt okay so this ldo's responsibility is to convert this 5 volt to 3.3 volt and then that 3.3 volt is actually provided to the uh, entire uh, microcontroller section okay after that this is the controller from st microelectronics which is actually the brain of this entire hardware okay after that this is basically the programming slash debugging header so if we have to program this microcontroller then we can program it uh, program it with the help of this header and for example if we have to send some data to external world or if we have to see 
some data uh, on the terminal while debugging then at that time we can use this uh, uh, header okay after that the next is a reset switch so uh, with the help of this switch we can actually reset this microcontroller after that these are the two user input switches and we can use these switches for different purpose for example uh, if we have to send the system parameter to the server then we can actually trigger uh, that action with the help of this switch okay after that uh, this is the crystal of this microcontroller okay main crystal of 8 megahertz of this controller then uh, there is actually one peripheral which is called as rtc peripheral which stands for a real time clock so this crystal is actually uh, the crystal of real time clock 32.768 kilohertz okay after that uh, this is basically another switch the purpose of this switch is actually to keep this microcontroller in reset state okay and why i have done this or why i have used this particular switch uh, you will understand that uh, when we will discuss the uh, 4g lte modem section okay after that this is basically the rgb led and uh, we can use this rgb led for different purpose for example uh, we can blink it on the successful transmission of data to the server or we can blink it on or we can switch it on on successful reception of the data from the server okay so we can actually use it for different purpose okay so that that was all about the stm32 section and again in this entire section we are going to discuss every single thing in detail we are going to discuss the significance of each and every component connected around this stm32 microcontroller okay so we are going to do all the theoretical calculation in order to understand this entire circuitry okay after that the next section is 4g lte modem section so this entire block this entire blog is basically 4G LTE modem section okay so i am going to start from this point uh, this point is basically the power supply of this uh, 4G LTE modem uh, this modem works on some different voltage level so that's why we have to use a uh, power supply or we have to dedicate a separate power supply for uh, the GSM modem and this is basically the power supply of this GSM modem okay uh, this is actually nothing but the LDO which stands for low dropout regulator okay so from here the 5 volt input is actually provided to this LDO and this LDO is responsible for generating a specific voltage on which this, my, uh, this 4G LTE modem works okay so again we are going to discuss every single thing uh, about the designing the power supply for the gsm module okay we are going to discuss every single thing in detail and we will see why so many capacitors are uh, connected on the output side of this uh, uh, ldo and why uh, these many capacitors are connected on the input side of this ldo okay so we will do all the theoretical calculation we will see how to select the components every single thing uh, we are going to discuss in detail uh, while dealing with this uh, LDO section of this uh, modem okay or power supply section of this modem after that the next part is uh, antenna section uh, although this uh, antenna section looks very simple but there are a lot of things uh, that we are going to discuss in this antenna section okay so this is not just resistor and this connector there are a lot of things that we are going to discuss this is basically the mains antenna and this is basically the auxiliary antenna okay and uh, we will discuss every single thing uh, in detail about this antenna section okay after that the next is uh, this is basically a boot configuration switch so whenever we have to upgrade the firmware of this uh, modem at that time we have to use this particular switch so again i will show you in the firmware upgrade section that how we can upgrade the firmware of this modem okay so after that these are the two leds uh, which are basically the indication leds and network led so whether the system is connected to the network or not or uh, whether the system is working properly or not that is actually indicated by these two leds okay so again we will discuss the circuit diagram of how to drive these leds with the help of this modem in detail with every um, means uh, all the theoretical analysis okay 
after that uh, the next part is uh, this is basically a voltage level converter uh, this microcontroller is going to communicate with this modem okay but the microcontroller works on different voltage level and this modem works on some different voltage level okay so this is basically the voltage level converter circuitry which is responsible for converting the voltages after that uh, this is basically the uh, usb to ttl converter and uh, this is responsible for connecting this uh, modem uh, to the usb interface of the uh, computer so we can actually communicate with this modem with the help of this usb interface okay uh, actually if you see uh, this is the USB interface of the modem and uh, it's already there in this modem so there was actually no need to connect this USB uh, interface uh, in this entire hardware and why I have I have used this USB interface in this hardware I'm going to discuss that in detail okay so that's the USB interface of the modem and this is the ESD protection circuitry for the USB interface so in this particular section we will discuss every single thing in detail that how to select these components and all the theoretical calculations okay after that this is basically the gnss section and this section is uh, responsible for providing the coordinates uh, of our system so again we will discuss every single thing about uh, this uh, gnss section in detail uh, in its uh, respective section okay after that this is basically power key switch uh, so whenever we have to switch on this modem at that time uh, we have to press this switch okay so again we will discuss in detail that how to design the circuitry for this power key switch okay after that uh, this is basically the sim card interface of the modem you know whenever we deal with uh, any of the modem or any of the gsm modem uh, gsm module at that time we need the sim card interface for network connectivity so again in its respective section we will discuss uh, every single thing about how to design the sim card interface and uh, why so many resistors and capacitors are actually connected uh, in front of this sim card interface and uh, there is actually one esd protection electrostatic discharge protection at the bottom side so again uh, we will discuss that in detail every single thing about uh, this particular section we are going to discuss in detail after that this is basically the sd card interface of modem and again uh, in this particular section we will discuss every single thing uh, about the sd card interface its circuitry its de uh, circuit design then again uh, esd protection circuitry is there at the bottom so we will we will see how to select the esd protection uh, and how to do the circuit designing of this sd card interface okay uh, sd card is basically used for logging purpose uh, we can use it for different uh, purposes uh, uh, for example let's say uh, if we have to download some file from the server okay and we have to store it in uh, our system then we can use it this uh, sd card interface okay after that this is basically the ldo of sd card interface and again uh, to the input side of this ldo 5 volt is provided and from this uh, uh, like this 5 volt is coming to this ldo and this ldo is uh, responsible for generating a certain voltage which is used to power the sd card okay so that's the purpose of this ldo so this is how this entire hardware is okay and we are going to discuss this entire hardware step by step in this entire course we are going to discuss each and every section of this entire hardware in detail and step by step manner okay all the theoretical calculation component selection significance of each and every component connected in that particular section we are going to discuss in detail okay so uh, again if you have not taken this course then you can check the course content of this course and i can assure you you will definitely enjoy this entire course okay so all right so that's what i wanted to tell in this particular lecture now i will see you in next lecture